Assalam o Alaikum everyone. Information Box Ticket Lifestyle brings you Flow Cytometry Principle Instrumentation, Procedure, Types and its Applications Kindly show your support by subscribing to my channel. Flow Cytometry Flow cytometry is a laser-based technique that detects and measures the physical and chemical properties of cells or particle in a heterogeneous fluid mixture. Flow cytometry has grown in popularity over the years since it allows for the quick examination of many cell properties, both qualitative and quantitative. This technique may detect particle size, granularity or internal complexity and fluorescence intensity among other things. These properties are measured through an optical to electronic coupling device which identifies the cells based on laser scattered by the cells. Flow cytometry, despite its name, does not always deal with the cells. It frequently deals with cells but it may also deal with chromosomes, molecules and a variety of other particles that can be suspended in a fluid. Now we will discuss the principle of flow cytometry. Flow cytometry's core idea is based on the detection of light scattered by particles and the fluorescence detected when these particles are passed in a steam with the help of laser beam. With the help of the diagram you can see the flow cytometer is made up of three major systems. Number one, the fluidic system. Number two, optical system. And number three, electronic systems. Number one, the fluidic system. The fluidic system is in charge of cell transport. It transports cells one at a time through pressured channels carrying shield fluid to the interrogation point where the laser contacts the sample. The fluidic system's sample flow rate may be changed to optimize analysis. A slow flow rate, for example, reduces the size of the sample stream, boosting the accuracy and uniformity of the sample detection. Number 2. Optical System The flow of cytometer's optical system is in charge of lighting and light gathering. Excitation lasers, lenses and filters make up this system. The lasers ensure that cells in the interrogation point are stimulated with a consistent wavelength of light. Example, argon lasers produce light at 488 nanometer and may be used to excite fluorophores having absorption maxima at 488 nanometer such as I fluoro TM 488 cat number 1023 and FITC cat number 135. Number 3. Electronic System Fluorescence and scattered laser light are emitted by the cells as they travel through the laser. The collecting optics, which include lenses and filters, separate and guide certain wavelengths of fluorescence and scattered laser light to the proper detectors. These detectors collect emitted fluorescence and scattered laser photons transform them into photocurrents and send them to the electronic system to be digitalized and proceed for further investigation. Flow cytometers have progressed tremendously since their inception in the 1970s till now. Early prototypes were single laser cytometers that could only measure size while today's cytometers include several laser and filter combinations to allow for multicolor analysis. Some cytometers can detect up to 14 parameters at the same time. As a result, while selecting fluorophores for multicolor analysis, apparatus configuration 
particularly the lasers and the filters must be carefully considered. Kindly don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so that you don't miss any videos. Let's now briefly understand the process of scattering of light. When a particle defects incoming laser light, light scattering occurs. The amount to which this occurs is determined by a particular's physical qualities, specifically its size and internal complexity. The forward scattered light FSC, is proportional to the cell's surface area or size. It detects rays that are barely off the axis of the incident laser beam scattered in the forward direction by a photodiode and measures primarily diffracted light. The cell's granularity or internal complexity is shown by side scattered light SSC. Side scattered light is a measurement of mostly refracted and reflected light that happens at any contact within the cell where the refractive index changes. Forward scattered light and side scattered light measurements are used to differentiate cell types in a heterogeneous cell population. Now let's understand what is fluorescence. Fluorescent markers are employed in a system to identify the expression of biological molecules such as proteins or nucleic acid. The fluorescent compound absorbs light energy throughout a spectrum of wavelengths that is unique to that chemical. This light absorption raises one electron in the fluorescent molecule to a higher energy state. The excited electron rapidly decays to its ground state, releasing surplus energy in the form of fluorescence, which detectors gather. Different fluorochromes can be used to differentiate discrete subpopulation in a mixed population of cells. When paired with forward scattered light and side scattered light data, the fluorescence pattern of each subpopulation may be used to determine which cells are present in a sample and collect their relative percentages. The detected light signals are then converted by an electronic system into electronic signals that the computer can progress. Now that we have understood the principle of flow cytometry, Let's learn the instrument functions. There were three major systems which I told you before which were fluidics, optical systems and electronic systems. First we will disclose what is the function of fluidics. The fluidic system's objective is to move particle in a fluid stream to the laser beam. The sample is injected into a stream of shield fluid, typically a buffered saline solution within the flow chamber to accomplish this. The flow chamber's design allows the sample core to be centered in the shield fluid center where the laser beam interacts with the particles. The sample suspension is focused by injecting it into the center of the shield liquid stream. The flow of the shield fluid pushes the particles and confines them into the sample core center. Now let's head to the optic system's function. The cytometer's optical system is made up of excitation optics and collecting optics. The laser and lenses used to shape and concentrate the laser beam to the flow of the sample comprise the excitation optics. The collection optics consist of a collection lens that collects light released after particles interact with the laser beam and a series of optical mirrors that diverts the collected light specific wavelengths to designated optical detectors. After a cell or particle passes through the laser light, the side rays and fluorescent signals are directed to photomultiplier tubes and the signals are collected by a photodiode. To obtain detector specificity for a given fluorescent dye, a filter is put in front of a tube allowing only a small range of wavelengths to reach the detector. 
Lastly, let's learn the function of electronic system. The electronic system turns the detector signals into digital signals that can be read by a computer. When light signals reach one side of the phototransistor or photodiode, they are translated into a relative quantity of electrons that are multiplied to produce a larger electrical current. The electrical current is transformed to a voltage pulse by the amplifier. The peak of the pulse is reached when the particle reaches the center of the beam, resulting in greatest amount of fluorescence and scattered. The pulse is then converted to a digital number by the analog to digital converter ADC. Now that we have learned about the system's function, now let's head to the protocols or procedure of the flow cytometry. Flow cytometry is made up of the following steps. Number 1. Preparation of samples. Number 2. Antibody staining. And number 3. Running samples. Let's learn the preparation of the samples. The cells being studied must be in a single cell suspension before being passed through flow cytometers. Before analyzing clumped cultured cell or cells existing in solid organs, they should be transformed into a single cell solution by enzymatic digestion or mechanical dissociation of the tissue. Mechanical filtering should therefore be used to eliminate undesirable instrument blockage and acquire higher quality flow data. The cells are then treated in a test tubes or micro teeter plates which unlabeled or fluorescently conjugated antibodies before being evaluated using a flow cytometer. The next step, antibody staining. Following preparation of the samples, the cells are coated with fluorochromes conjugated antibodies specific for the surface marker seen on various cells. It can be accomplished using direct indirect or intracellular staining. Cells are treated with an antibody that has been directly coupled to a fluorophore in indirect staining. The fluorophore conjugated secondary antibody recognizes the main antibody through indirect staining. Intracellular staining enables for direct assessment of antigens present inside the cell cytoplasm or nucleus. The cells are permeable first and then stained with antibodies in a permeabilization solution. Lastly, running the samples. First, control samples are conducted to adjust the detector's voltages. The cytometer's flow rates are set and the sample is run. There are many types of flow cytometry. Few of them are Flow cytometers are classified into many categories based on their function and precision. Traditional flow cytometers Traditional flow cytometers are most prevalent cytometers that use shield fluid to concentrate the sample stream. Traditional flow cytometers often employ lasers with wavelengths of 488 nanometer blue. 405 nanometer violet, 532 nanometer green, 552 nanometer green, 561 nanometer green and yellow, 640 nanometer red, and 355 nanometer ultraviolet. Number 2 Acoustic Focusing Cytometers. Ultrasonic waves are utilized in these cytometers to concentrate the cells for examination. This reduces sample clogging while also allowing for larger sample inputs. Number 3. Cell Sorters Cell sorters are type of classic flow cytometers that allows the user to collect samples after they have been proceed. Cells that are positive for target parameters can be distinguished from those that are negative. Before Imaging Flow Cytometer Imaging Flow Cytometer combines standard cytometer and fluorescence microscopy. 
An imaging cytometer enables for quick morphological and multi-parameter fluorescence examination of a sample at both the single cell and population levels. Please support this channel so that I can make more videos for you. Let's head to the application of the flow cytometry. Cytometry is employed in a variety of domains such as molecular biology, pathology, immunology, virology, plant biology, and marine biology. Some examples of frequent applications are it is used in clinical labs to identify malignancy in body fluids such as leukemia. Cytometers like cell sorters can be used to physically separate cells of interest in different collecting tubes. It may be used to identify the presence of DNA using fluorescent markers. Flow cytometers can analyze replicating cells at four distinct phases of the cell cycle by employing fluorescent dye. Acoustic flow cytometers are used to investigate multi-drug resistant microorganisms in blood and other materials. Flow cytometers can identify various phases of cell death, apoptosis and necrosis based on distinction in morphological and biochemical alterations. But unfortunately, there are few limitations as well. These limitations are this method does not offer information on protein intracellular locations or distribution. Debris accumulates over time which may lead to error findings. The pretreatment associated with sample preparation and staining take time, which is laborious. Flow cytometry is a costly procedure that necessitates the use of highly trained workers. So that's it for today. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon buttons for more videos. Thank you so much for watching till the end.